3 booktube welcome back to my channel these are all the books that i read in april 2017 you know i enjoy both fiction and non-fiction reading so i read novels and non-fiction consisting of memoirs and books about statistics business psychology and self-help i participated in one readathon and that was the tome topper readathon which i have yet to make a wrap-up video so forgive me but during the month i read some long books and some short ones so overall I read a little over 4,000 pages. I visited four different countries internationally through books. Now let's talk about my fiction reading. My first fiction read was My Name is Lucy Barton by Elizabeth Strout. This was a very well-written narrative of a young woman who becomes ill and is hospitalized. And her mother, from whom she's been estranged for several years, comes to sit by her bedside for several days. And the conversations they have expose the nature of their strained relationship as well as the cause for the rift. Elizabeth Strout writes very emotionally moving pieces and this one was no different. Next, I read The Book Thief of the Tome Topple Readathon. This was 550 pages about a young 11-year-old girl named Liesel who goes to live with a foster family during World War II. And the unique thing about the story is it's narrated by death. So there's foreshadowing as death explains how he knows this little girl so intimately and the times of her life when he shows up. The Book Thief is about passion and religion and humanity and inhumanity and relationships and love and although the main characters are Germans, everyone is portrayed as a victim of war, not a willing participant. So it was very readable and emotionally driven, no matter what your background. Other novel I finished during Tom Topple was A Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. I did my first buddy read with Jolien from The Fictional Reader. The story is about a man who develops a chronic displacement disorder following a traumatic event and he's able to travel back and forth during time and meet his wife as a child. I followed this one up with Eve Out of Her Ruins, written by Ananda Davy, who's a writer from Mauritius, which if you don't know, is one of the islands on the eastern coast of the African continent. And the story is set in the slums of Mauritius, and the narrative flips between four different teenagers who are just trying to survive the violence and desperation of their circumstances. It is a haunting story, and I can't wait to tell you more about it. Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Foer was a complex read. It is about a fictional character, also named Jonathan Safran Foer, yeah I know, what are the odds, who travels to Ukraine to find a woman who helped his grandfather during World War II. The novel is an example of epistolary fiction in that it is told mostly through letters exchanged between Foer, the character, and his translator. Then I read The Luminaries by Elizabeth Catton. This was my masterpiece of the month. It was 830 pages and not quite as daunting as I first thought it was going to be, but the text was dense and the fact that it was historical and set in New Zealand with so many characters added a few layers of unfamiliarity that made it a little hard to get into, but overall it was a stunning read and I'm ecstatic to have finished it. You can be sure I'll be talking about this book for a long time. And finally, Tell Me How This Ends Well by David Samuel Levinson is dystopic and futuristic. It's set in Los Angeles in the year 2022. It's about the adult children of a Jewish family and their attempts to resolve a difficult situation with their parents. The novel wasn't what I was expecting. I didn't love the writing and even though I was so excited about the cover, this was definitely my lowest rated novel this month. Those were the fiction books that I read in April. Now onto my non-fiction reading. First was The Go-Giver, which is a business book about how to get what you want in business by giving value first, not afterwards. Next, we had The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, which is about how we need to make contracts with ourselves and honor them. Seth Godin's Lynchpin is a business book and it's about how to make yourself so valuable that companies and individuals seek you out instead of you trying to get them interested in you. Man's Search for Meaning was written by Viktor Frankl, a survivor of the concentration camps in World War II. This book is about the horrors he endured, but also not just about how he survived, but why, and how others can focus on their purpose to get through difficult times. I read I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou, which is her first autobiography. She wrote seven. And this one is about her childhood and the horrors she also endured during the racially tense decades in the middle of the century. How the Lie with Statistics is exactly what the title says. The book explains the statistical methods we can use to describe groups and how we can use each method to creatively represent just what we want the data to suggest. This is a pretty old publication. It's from the 1940s, I think, but Bill Gates listed it as one of his favorite reads last year, and I just had to check it out. 
And I rounded this out with this book written by YouTube superstar Glozell, where she tells her story and gives advice on how to live out your dreams too. And that's it. Those are all the books that I read in April. 14 in all, seven fiction and seven nonfiction, which is pretty even, which is almost exactly what I wanted my reading month to be like. So thanks for watching this video. Please leave me a comment down below if you've read any of these books and you want to chat about them. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.